Shrati, what is Ashtanga Yoga and how is it different to, say, Pali Yoga or Vinyasa Yoga? Ashtanga Yoga is a traditional practice which has come from many generations. And uh, our yoga, all those other yogas which you are telling is not traditional, which doesn't uh, represent any parampara. Parampara means a tradition, a lineage, uh, which has come from many, many generations. So it doesn't represent any kind of uh, those things in those yogas. What is the difference between a leg class and a Mysore star class? Leg class, we count the vinyasas. So all the students are doing simultaneously. They are doing the same posture at the same time. And they are following their teacher. Uh, teachers count in the leg class. Mm -hmm. In Mysore classes, we put individual attention to each and every student. Make sure that they are learning it properly. Their postures are proper, their breathing is proper, and uh, how their alignment in the posture is correct. All those things we monitor and we see. So, in France, many teachers and yoga studios claim to be teaching traditional Ashtanga yoga as taught by your grandfather, Sri K. Patabi Joyce. Um, but a number of these teachers have never been to India. Uh, and those that have may have only studied here with you or your grandfather once or twice. Could you please tell us what Parampara is and why lineage is important? If someone comes one or twice, that is not enough to understand Parampara. They have to come every year, annual uh, trips they have to make to the Shala and learn from us. And it is, it takes a long time. It's a process or it's a method to understand how this can be taught to others. So it is, it takes many years of study with the Guru. So when they don't have that, they can't give a good teachings to their students. So this can be very dangerous. So yoga becomes only physical like going to the gym and doing it, never becomes a spiritual practice. Here, when the spiritual process happens, uh, presence of Guru is important. Your presence with the Guru is very important. To seek whatever he says and take his blessings, his guidance in your own personal spiritual journey. So that is why it is very important. We always chant Agnana Dibirandasya, Gnana Jagasharakaya, Chakshurunmini Tamina Tasme Shri Guru Venama. That means only a Guru can remove all the darkness in you and guide you towards enlightenment. From darkness to enlightenment, only a Guru can teach because he has experienced all this. And he, one through his own sadhana, who has achieved those higher goals of yoga. So only through his guidance and his blessings, one can go forward in spiritual journey. So everyone needs a guru, mm -hmm. everyone needs a guide mm -hmm. who can guide them. So it is very important to spend our time with the guru as much as possible, mm -hmm. to learn the system, to take, you know, to understand the system and take his blessings so that we can move forward in our spiritual journey. But unfortunately, everywhere it has become exercise. Mm -hmm. There is no spiritual aspects anywhere. Uh, many other yogas, they offer certain set of uh, asanas and there is nothing about spirituality. There is no talks about spirituality. There is no talks about philosophical talks about yoga. These kind of things can be really disaster. disaster. It can be a big disaster because people, they never have proper understanding of yoga and they do whatever they want and they call it as yoga. And this is happening not only in one country, it's happening everywhere in many countries. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be people who are learning, uh, students who are want to learn, they should decide mm -hmm. with whom I should learn, why we are learning this, what I, I should get it, what spiritual knowledge I should get, how I should get, whom I should choose for this. All these things we should, we should 
sit and think and then take a decision where to go and learn yoga. Mm -hmm. So when someone is practicing traditional practice, traditional practice doesn't does not advertise. Mm -hmm. The tradition, the students who are doing traditional practice, they never go and advertise themselves. They always do their own sadhana. People automatically get attracted. Their students get attracted to this sadhana, and then they start learning, seeking this. So it is very difficult now. It has become so commercial yoga. There is no spiritual aspect in anywhere. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to do teacher training. Everyone wants to do uh, courses, intensive course, that course. It, this is just money making. That's all. Nobody. They are not directing students in a proper manner. Mm -hmm. They are not directing them in spiritual journey. All they is they do 15 days, one month teacher training and take money, and this won't help the student at all. A seeker always should spend many years of studies with his, with his Guru. Only when Guru blesses him or her, then only they can become a teacher and they can carry on this, uh, carry on this knowledge to give to others. Thank you. Could you please explain the difference between a teacher who is authorized level 1, authorized level 2 and certified? Authorized level one is students who have limited, limited in a sense, who has a primary, primary asanas of knowledge. So the intermediate students have little more knowledge about other different asanas, mm -hmm. and certified students have more asanas mm -hmm. and little bit of philosophy. You know, they know philosophy. So this is. We see how students have been coming, some students have been coming for 10 years, mm -hmm. so we certify them. Mm -hmm. So students who have been coming for 5 years to study with us, we give them level 2 authorization. Mm -hmm. Students who have been coming for 3 years, 4 years like that, we give them level 1 authorization. This is, this is very important. There is actually, if you see, there is no difference between any of this. At the same, it's only because they are been coming for very long time. Mm -hmm. They they are they know the knowledge a little bit more mm -hmm. than what first level or second level knows. That's why the certified students have little more of uh, knowledge mm -hmm. than these two first and second level. And how can a student know if their teacher really is authorized and certified? Where can they find this information? We have our website. It's all written on the website who's authorized, who's certified, mm -hmm. who's level one, who's level two. And can these certified or authorized teachers offer teacher trainings? No, we've never given any permission mm -hmm. to any of the authorized or certified students to conduct any teacher training. Mm -hmm. Because teacher trainings, you cannot train anyone. It should be, I, as I told you, it's a method, it's a process which has to go for many years to know this knowledge. And then there is no quick solution in yoga. Mm -hmm. There is no quick fix. Like everyone wants to go instantly. If you want to buy some some gadget, you can go to a shop and buy gadget. Yoga is not like that. You can't just pay money and get it. You should experience it, yoga, for many years. Then only you'll have a proper understanding. So nowadays, as I told you, it's become so commercial now. Everybody wants to use this teacher training, those intensive courses, two hours score, two hundred hours course, three hundred hours course, five hundred hours course, and they want to, you know, manipulate this and try to destroy this in a traditional practice which has come from generations. It's it's it has come from rishis, all the saints and saints of India. They did all this yoga, everything. They created this. They started teaching this. So it has come from millions and millions of years back. Mm -hmm. So now this the commercialization of yoga has, is destroying the whole system. These people should be very careful while doing this. Who are going to study with these people who are doing this kind of courses must think before they sign up, before they do these courses. It will never take them anywhere. If they do this course, they don't get enlightened. Mm -hmm. it, they don't get the sadhana. Mm -hmm. It is just a certificate, it's a paper, that's all. Mm -hmm. If you want just a paper, 
yoga is not they shouldn't use the word yoga they should use it as a training not they shouldn't even use yoga it shouldn't be yoga to teach a training it should be only teach a training that's all mm-hmm. without yoga <laughs> like physical practice mm-hmm. um and the authorized or certified teachers um from here do they have certain responsibilities oh definitely certified authorized students have responsibility they should always uphold the parampara mm-hmm. not get carried away uh, with all this big companies now are coming big companies are coming and offering them to do teacher trainings mm-hmm. everywhere this is a big problem this this can cause lots of problem lots of damage to the whole system the whole mm-hmm. method and uh, these authorized students and certified students should be very careful they shouldn't get carried away by all this big corporates who are coming and trying to do business in, in the name mm-hmm. of yoga and what's your authorized or certified is it a qualification you have for your life or can you have it removed i mean they, we have an uh, agreement uh, where students should follow uh, yamani yamas and uh, all those things they should mm-hmm. follow it and not to do any kind of teacher trainings mm-hmm. so because that as i told you it is it's it is not that what we want them to do that is not why we certified them we certified them say thinking that they will take this parampara ahead and they in their own country they will teach it to your people and they will also relish this beautiful practice which has come from ages so <clears throat> once they when students don't follow this the whole system again and it is a bad name to the institution also mm-hmm. like this kind of offerings like teacher training all those things what do you see is the future of ashtanga yoga ashtanga i would say yoga this yoga should go ahead mm-hmm. yoga has everything it has ashtanga yoga hatha yoga dhyana yoga bhakti yoga karma yoga everything is there in yoga mm-hmm. yoga is just one word that's all and and different experiences made it different name that's all mm-hmm. uh, i'm not talking about the modern names mm-hmm. what they are giving i mean ancient names which different different incarnations of god brought different kinds of experience in that experience it was called as differently but eventually it is all different it is all the same in bhagavad gita krishna talks about karma yoga dhyana yoga bhakti yoga all those things mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it is all different mm-hmm. it is the le- different stages of your practice mm-hmm. so ashtanga yoga also preaches the same thing mm-hmm. in a different way but it's the same it is the yoga mm-hmm. so different patanjali preached the same thing another incarnation of the god came and preached as patanjali mm-hmm. uh, krishna came as incarnation of krishna and preached it vishnu vishnu took an incarnation of as krishna and he preached about yoga in bhagavad gita mm-hmm. so there are different you know different avataras we call avataras means different incarnations in those incarnation he did the preaching according to that time mm-hmm. that time that situation all those things so we cannot say ashtanga yoga is different than other yoga mm-hmm. then hatha yoga or bhakti yoga dhyana yoga all are same yoga is one so we should treat it as like that yoga is one okay and finally do you think one day you would like to come and teach in france Oh definitely I will come I will come to teach in France one day I'm I'm looking forward to it but when the appropriate time comes I will definitely come and teach So yoga doesn't belong to any religion it doesn't belong to any caste or creed or any gender so yoga can be practiced by anyone in a traditional way Mm-hmm. so once we practice that we can get we can get our self transformed transformed mm-hmm. and we, we the transformation will happen 
for each and every one. So all the countries should practice yoga. Everyone should relish yoga, not to manipulate it. It is your own personal sadhana for your own well-being. So yoga is for well-being. It is not for commercializing. You know what I mean? Yoga is only for well-being. So everyone wants to be good in this world, live happily, and live for the maximum. So we all need to practice yoga so that we can relish this life in a peaceful way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.